Hello, here we are nearing the end of season two, autumn. Our episode today is called Light at the End of the Tunnel. And the days are getting shorter here in Texas. How is the light for you where you are? Well, there isn't enough light where I am. The sun, you know, it's a place where the sun doesn't shine. And, uh, but um, maybe it's because it's 6 p.m. or... Um, I don't know, it's getting dark very early these days. Um, there yeah, isn't any tunnel though. Te- yeah. It isn't what? There isn't no enough tunnel. tunnel. Mm-hmm. There isn't any there's light and there isn't any tunnel, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> there's plenty of tunnel. To me, the tunnel represents just something you're enduring and trying to get through. And I think, you know, a lot of people are struggling with financial things and they're struggling with family and homeschooling and work and finances and friends that have lost jobs. So to me, the, the tunnel kind of represents the, the, the darkness that we're in. I mean, I've seen people posting posts about how, oh, how the plague was back in the Middle Ages and how they, you know, various epidemics and pandemics were around the world. And I don't know. I, I I think we're kind of all struggling with with a little bit of darkness. Like I've I've been disappointed by some friends, but I've also been very very pleased by others. So, I, for me, there is some light in the darkness. Speaking speaking of which, I mean the darkness. Do you think that darkness? It, it's about symbolism, probably. But the darkness gives us the power what to to destroy or to create. What what would you say? Darkness. Well, first of all, it gives us the opportunity to sleep because we're supposed to, the circadian rhythm is we're supposed to sleep at night. But uh, darkness can be like our our shadow, our deep unconscious stuff. And a lot of artists, musicians, writers write out of the dark spaces in their soul, you know. Mm. Uh, Tolstoy was exploring different things and uh, St. Augustine and Mark Twain were looking at they were looking at the darkness in society. Yeah, it's like have you ever have you ever have you ever thought of doing any writing this this uh, fall winter from, from, season from from the darkness side of my soul? No, but I'd prefer the light one. But uh, <laughs> I tried a few times, <laughs> giving it up eventually. Um, well, I read it. Well, I tried. I just you know I read the summary that if you stop waiting for the light at the end of the tunnel, just maybe it's time to lead that bitch up. I don't know. Maybe I should write yeah. like well, twice yeah, yeah, as yeah. hard as I, you know, ever before. Well, there's an old Peter, Paul, and Mary song. Uh, she's another sort of California-looking girl, uh, a folk trio. Uh, I actually saw them play at Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas, many years ago. But they have a a Christmas concert that they made years ago, and and they have a, a song, "Light One Candle." And I guess the idea is that if if everybody would light one candle, like maybe the world wouldn't be such a dark place. I, I like that idea. Hmm. So, I mean, the light, the end of a tunnel, the light of a candle. Uh, but what would if I'd like to have someone like larger light, some kind of, a, not a train, of course, not an uncommon train going on to you from the tunnel, <laughs> but uh, something like, Two candles, maybe, or even three, more than one. Well, you know, when we uh, approach the end of uh, November and start moving into December, uh, we have the season of Advent, and Advent has different symbols and rituals. The Advent uh, wreath, you have uh, one, you know, candle for each week waiting and moving towards Christmas. And so candles are are popular. People are buying lots of candles at this point of the year. They're buying candles for their homes. They're buying candles. They sometimes put candles inside of pumpkins that they carve out for pumpkin festivals. But do you have any candles at your house? Or your- I love candles. I love them. I love everything that lights up. I like I love the. Um, how do you call the stove, the wood burning stove? I love everything where there's fire. Um, everything. And I have lots of candles. Some of them, actually, I have candles like 30 years old at my place. Really? I don't know. I should have like 
split them up long time ago, but they just I keep them as a souvenir, I guess. So they keep I don't know bring certain memories. Do you have any like old candles at your home? I do. I I do. I actually am very fond of candles, and sometimes when a former student or a family member or somebody travels to another country, I like them to bring me a candle or a wooden spoon or a scarf. So something that's, you know, kind of from that country. And I have some beautiful, old, beautiful old candles from a cathedral in Mexico City. I had one of a former student went there and brought those back. I have another friend who went to uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Actually, I went to Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I bought some candles. But I uh, have some candles from that trip, and that was maybe 10 or 12 years ago. Yeah, I like candles, and I like to give candles as gifts because, uh, you know, if you're upper middle class, you have, you know, plenty of stuff. But a lot of people exchange gifts during the holidays, and I like to give candles or Candy is, or... isn't that isn't that amazing uh, like we've just mentioned old candles like going back 20 or 30 years isn't that amazing like i guess that some tunnels just happen to be longer than others right because who would have thought that we have that light at the end of a 30 year old tunnel yes yeah and you know even a year ago we didn't know that we would be dealing with some of this pandemic stuff and and yeah. But, you know, even a year ago, I didn't know we were going to be doing Patroma therapy. So there you go. And yeah. And also, been... if if we're looking back, that probably means the other end of the tunnel. So there is a light, like we're looking towards the light, the end of the tunnel. But if we look back at the beginning of the tunnel, there is light there, too. That's true. But don't look back. Look forward. I think you told me once the, tr the car is supposed to go forward. Don't look in the rear view mirror. What's the thing you told me? I guess it was that there was a reason for the rear view mirror to be so small or something like that. Well, I spent a lot of time looking in the rear view, rear view mirror because in Texas, people don't know how to drive. So there's people on their phones. They're not paying attention. I, I have to be looking in the rear view mirror and forward at the same time. No, really, Texas is terrible. Drivers are, are really... Yeah. Kind, well, of, kind of awful well, well but you know back to our tunnel um, right. some of our subscribers are into trains and traveling and in uh anna karenin there's of course the famous lots of train scenes and in uh some of mark twain's work there are some trains uh, the trains that go through tunnels are interesting i have been on a train that went from the edge of texas down into mexico and and went over some really i was more afraid of the tall bridges than i was of the the long tunnels but uh traveling on a train is like is is pretty pretty neat i, I like it have you ever traveled on a train i have of course and uh i also have uh, lots of memories uh, about trains just as i have about candles and i'm just always speaking i'm i'm i've gone into that strange state of vision where i see various flashbacks and i'm kind of starting toward the proverbial light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> that's good that's yeah. good well you know um i enjoy hearing from our subscribers and and learning kind of what they're doing to deal with the times that that we're in one of the things i like to do as i've mentioned before is i like to cook you know even if it's starting to get dark early here you know if I start cooking some soup or cutting up some onions or like cooking something, maybe put on a little bit of music, I don't quite feel so glum. Um, mm -hmm. Glum is a word that, uh, you know, you're not sad. There's no specific reason, but your spirit's kind of down. So for me, you know, cooking is a way to kind of lighten up the day when it's starting to get dark. And in the summertime, you know, it stays light longer. So people are out walking and jogging and you know, playing tennis and sitting in clubs and bars and having a beer, but we're getting ready to enter a period of even even more darkness because winter winter is on its way. Winter right. is on its way. Well, what uh, you were telling me about the stove you had that was named after Benjamin Franklin, or what? What is the deal with the stove? Yeah, all you those, have? all those. Old coal burning stoves. I guess the um, their father and mother probably was a Benjamin Franklin. I accidentally 
learned about uh, his stuff or he invented them like 300 years ago um, oh. yeah I like I like stoves uh, lights at the end of a stove uh, I think it's fascinating well uh, so this stove is gonna go into like your your country land place is yeah there are happening? many old old stoves made uh, about five 80 years ago in the Soviet time and they have they have all these uh, uh, imprints or I don't know letters and symbols uh, and names from the Soviet time uh, all over them and uh, it's funny to have one it's like like a coin which you have found uh, and the coin like 200 years old and you found it and you read the flip side and uh, I don't know yeah. and uh, it's interesting and uh, but I guess uh, yeah I guess they all <laughs> come from Benjamin Franklin go figure well I have um, I have a just an, an oven on a very modern stove here in Dallas and I like at this time of the year I like to cook I like to bake gingerbread I like to break uh, quiche I like to make muffins I like to make I, I like the smell of cooking and I think uh, you know, you you were saying that if you put a tea kettle on one of these wood burning stoves, it's kind of a way of keeping yourself company, like a kettle on a stove. Absolutely, I think uh, they have their own soul, stove soul. I don't know, but uh, they're definitely animate. Wow, the stove soul. That sounds like a great. Uh, it's deep song. Yeah, that is deep. We better stop on a deep point. Uh, next episode is going to be about road trip and cars. Then we're going to end the season with a episode about snowflakes. So we hope that you'll stick around and goodbye for now. Yeah, and everybody who's listening, just keep moving. And remember that there are more than one-way tunnels in life. See ya. <laughs>